from SF Land, this is Dorking Out, a podcast for people who love to dork out about movies, TV, and everything pop culture. Welcome to Dorking Out. My name is Sonia Mansfield, and joining me is my podcasting sister from another mister and the chosen one, Margot D. <laughs> Hello, my friend. Hello, friend. We are dorking out about 1992's Buffy the Vampire Slayer in honor of Luke Perry. R.I.P. Mm. Luke Perry. Aww. That was a sad one. Also, the TV show came out 22 years ago in March. Oh my god, I can't believe that. Can you believe that? There are people of legal drinking age that don't know a time when there wasn't a Buffy the Vampire Slayer <laughs> TV show. <laughs> or, or that there was an original movie yeah. based it, that it was based upon. Uh, I feel old. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember when this movie came out? I didn't see it in the movie theater, but I'm, I remember when it came out. So I saw it in the theater, and I was a really, really big fan. I actually dressed up as Buffy the Vampire Slayer for Halloween that year. Oh, my I was, God. I think I was 21 <laughs> when I saw it. Or, yeah, I would have been 21. Um. And I just loved it. And here's what I was trying to figure out, like, why, why did I love it so much? And I think it was because there were not a lot of shows or movies with women who like really kicked ass. Like it was like, right. we had like Ripley from Aliens and Sarah Connor from Terminator. And then, you know, maybe like Princess Leia, who, who didn't like physically kick, da- kick ass, but she, you know, could shoot a laser blaster and things like that. But like, we didn't have like Dark Angel and Alias and Tomb Raider and like all these things with like really like physically strong women who will just kick your ass. And so right. I think I was and she was young and I just thought that was so cool. And so I was quite, quite smitten with this movie when I saw it. I and know I, my brother had a big crush on Christy Swanson. I think a lot of people did back yeah. in the day. Yeah, she she's was. T- she's totally cute. Yeah, she's adorable. Everybody drink. Adorable. Everybody drink. Um, for those of you who haven't seen it, it stars Christy Swanson as Buffy, and it stars Luke Perry as Pike, which isn't a name; it's a fish, and he's like the <laughs> like kind of rebel on the like that she doesn't like at first, and then you know, but he starts to figure out there's vampires, and so they kind of team up, and then Donald Sutherland is her watcher. And it's got Paul Rubens, Pee Wee Herman himself as like one of the lead vampires. And then Rudger Hauer is like kind of the lead, lead vampire, like the big bad guy. And, you know, Hilary Swank is like, or Hilary Swank, Ben Affleck, David Arquette, Stephen Root all play like kind of small parts throughout the movie. So if you're paying attention, you'll see these things. Um and Donald Sutherland kind of shows up and tells Christy Swanson that she's the chosen one, that this is her birthright, which she thinks is a trust fund, and that she needs to kill vampires, and she doesn't believe it, and she's like dumb valley girl. And then we get lots of training montages, and she kills vampires. The end. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty much the movie. This I mean... movie is less than 90 minutes. It, it, it actually feels like it's too long sometimes. I oh, mean, it, that's so interesting. So it sounds like maybe you're not like in love with this movie. Okay, so I haven't seen it in a really long time. And I'm going to admit something. I never watched the TV show, which oh. I I know. I had, it's really I had, good. At the time, it's really good. I know I had a roommate and at the time, and she and her friends watched every week. And there was never room for me in the living room. There were so many people. Mm-hmm. So I think I was like, oh, fuck that then. I don't care. I'm not going to watch it, <laughs> which is dumb. I know it's really dumb because everybody tells me how great it is. But it's Josh Whedon in 1992. He was a writer for Roseanne. Mm-hmm. And then he sold the script and then it became a movie. I didn't see it in the movie theater, but I did see it. I think I saw it on VHS or something and I thought it was cute. But my problem, and I was just about to tell you this, is I saw this over the weekend and it was during F This Movie Fest. Yeah which is this Twitter party and they, the year was 1986 and they had all these different movies and you tweeted along with them. So I saw this in between Ferris Bueller's day off and aliens. Yeah. This movie's not going to fit no. really well with the, those are really good. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. 
script, good acting, yeah, good direction. Uh, it's got good music. It's it's just really. I mean, Buffy's fine and has a lot of. Ca- it's fun to see Ben Affleck in like mm-hmm. a little cameo part. But um, I thought it. I don't know. There was. It just didn't click with me for some reason. I'm not quite sure because I like vampire stuff. Yeah, it's this movie's very light very yes. light and it i i rewatched it last night and my husband actually rewatched it with me which surprised me cuz like i said in the past he says no a lot <laughs> to our <laughs> movies but he was like yeah yeah i'm on board and i was like cool so he watched it too and we both really enjoyed it but it's it's very light i can see why this movie did really well like on hbo or tnt you know, USA, things like that. Like, it's very, very easy to watch. It's not very demanding. Uh, it's about vampires, but it's not very dark. It's, you know, just a very easy watch. And we watched it and last night and thought, this was fun, but it, I'll forget that I watched it like a couple days from now but I, I still like have such a soft spot for this movie I don't know if I can watch it without my nostalgia glasses I guess there's some really good I mean like Chris, let's say, let's say again Christy Swanson is adorable yes very and adorable. I love her character I, I, I like the idea of the character of a girl that's kind of ditzy and then she becomes the hero for everybody right and I love the tr- and I love a good training montage <laughs> I'm always up for that Yes, and she does a good job with that. But I, I, I just sort of like it didn't have what I do know from Buffy from the TV show, from what everybody's always told me, and what I, you know, just absorbed over the years is that Buffy was very tough and very self-contained. Yes, and very poised and very sure of herself. And then this Buffy, the first twenty minutes of this movie, she's so dumb. Yeah, and it, it's it very really valley takes a while girl for her to very valley girl it's very valley girl it's like a little reminiscent of heathers but it's pre-clueless you know with like a lot of the lingo like this jacket's so lush and you know it's so five minutes ago and get out of my facial and all that stuff you know so it's got like that kind of teenage hierarchy i guess Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know in it yeah and yeah she's you know she's a bit of a dum-dum she's a bit of a ditz who then finds her true calling, I guess. Not I guess, she yeah. does. <laughs> and, and, that's, yeah. and that's when the movie becomes a little bit more interesting, for sure. Well, she's this, I guess it's her throughout the ages. It's always somebody who like, looks like her. Yeah. That's the chosen one. And so Donald Sutherland keeps like ch- raising this person like every single time he finds this person and he protects them over the years Mm -hmm. and supposedly he changed all of his dialogue because he didn't like it (laughs) and Joss Whedon said he was there for the first few weeks for the movie and then he just left because he was so mad because like they really he thought he wanted something much darker yes it's not dark I mean like I always thought about that with like Buffy the Vampire Slayer it was a very dark show with dark themes yes it is this is not dark no there's vampires and killings but you just don't care like it's not scary Mm mm-mm you know, no, there's just... nothing scary. There's no stakes, really, other Not you know, really. In, in that you maybe care about Buffy and Pike, but you know, you really could care less if pretty much anybody else died. <laughs> and they shot this movie just because of Luke Perry, because if you don't know, like at the time, 90210 was a huge deal. Yeah. And he was a big star at the he time. He was an incredible star. Like, wasn't there. I read something about how there was like a, a signing at a mall. Did you read about this? Oh, I remember this. And like 10,000 people showed up and he only, he, he couldn't even stay because it was deemed unsafe. It's like, he was a huge heartthrob. And I In think the 80s it is. In the 90s, they had that. They yeah. had mall signings. And I am yeah. fascinated that he signed on for this movie where he really is playing like the damsel in distress he has nothing to do he really doesn't in his part is like he's just it's all like charm it's all yeah. like it's all like goofball charm and he really like she has to save him like over and over and that's fine it's super cute 
it's a very, like I said, very light, easy movie. I just think he was such a big TV star at the time. He really could have picked something else, you know, something more substantial, I guess, maybe a starring role. But he didn't. I think he, he picked... was the star. See, I, I still think she's the star. She's the star for sure, but I think at the time he was the biggest name. But he was the big name, yeah, for sure. Him yeah. and Donald Sutherland, I guess. <laughs> and so maybe Blue... Teenagers love to see movies with Donald <laughs> Sutherland. <laughs> He's so but popular. He... I love him. He's still alive. He's like in his 90s now. He's the oh 80s or 90s now. He's so old. I do. But, I do uh, love Donald Sutherland, but I don't. I do th- I, but I don't good. think he was really, you know, a huge hit with the t- the teens. <laughs> no, no, it was all about Luke Perry. Like people went to see Luke Perry to be in a movie, and he apparently was dating Christy Swanson at the time. They had oh. like a little romance. But once again, he's he's twenty six years old when he makes this movie. <laughs> right. He's playing like he's an playing a high school senior. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's what he's doing on nine hundred two and oh two. But on 90210, he was like uh, the James Dean type. Yes. Like he was very, he was tough, but tender and all that stuff. And I think he just wanted to be a little more goofy. Mm -hmm. And that's what this movie gave him. But I think that's all it gives him. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he, honestly, like my synopsis is pretty spot on. I'm like, she's a dumb dumb. He tells her about her birthright. She trains, which involves a lot of backflips and tumbling. And going, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> What's she, like? And she kills vampires. And there you go. And That's, she's a cheerleader. And she's the cheerleader. And I will say there's a scene where she's doing, she defies Merrick. That's the watcher played by Donald Sutherland and goes to her basketball game and does her cheer. And it's like, how funky is your chicken? <laughs> how how loose is, is your goose? goose? <laughs> My husband laughed really hard at that. <laughs> he was he thought it was quite funny i he'd forgotten about that one how loose is your goose our <laughs> goose is totally loose <laughs> now wait now shake your caboose now shake your caboose i'm gonna be buffy again this halloween i'm gonna get that cheerleading outfit <laughs> it'd be so fun and she has a cute boyfriend but he's He's kind of he has a friend that treats her kind of creepy. Yeah. But then Buffy gets stronger, and as she gets stronger, you know, she's fighting off guys that treat her bad. Yeah. And she loses her friends. Yeah. And so uh, Pike becomes her only friend. Yeah. And then they have a romance, and then there's a dance at the end. I think it's and very. I think their stuff at the end actually is really cute. It's Where, very cute. Like he, you know, she goes to the dance and. You know, he shows up and asks her to dance, and he's all clean cut and wearing his leather jacket. And they just, you know, have a very sweet moment. And I think uh, I told I told my husband, I was like, I love it when they are first slow dancing. And he says, like, you're not like other girls. And she's like, yes, I am. And it's just this sweet little moment that's like she swept up in this moment because she's just like everybody else. And likes to be in Luke Perry's arms. <laughs> it's cute. Oh, well, who wouldn't be? Right. Right. Yeah. And then um and then the, and then they get broken into by 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 vampires. Yes, because and, and then so she's got to fight her way out and uh, Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say um slowly Paul Rubens has been killing off seniors at the high school, like just killing off kids to build up the army and all of these vampires can come into the dance because they've been invited because they're seniors. So they can break that rule of and you can't face, come in. Hillary when Swank you're... does it? What? <laughs> what? And Hillary Swank invites them in? Yeah, because they're all seniors and it's a senior dance. So seniors can still come in. So everybody's in danger because a dummy Hillary Swank. <laughs> <laughs> She looks so young in this movie. She looks really, really young. It, it was really fun to see, like, like her and, like, David Arquette is really young. Ben Affleck. Like, just to see these guys before they became really big. There's also this scene where a vampire shows up to the basketball game. Do you remember, do you remember that part? 
and is playing basketball and he's like yeah, really well, really that's, that's... he's really good at it and I was wondering do you think he could beat Teen Wolf in a one-on-one because <laughs> Teen Wolf that was his thing that he got really whenever he was the werewolf he played basketball well, that's back to Michael J. Fox yes <laughs> I think maybe he could and he was a basketball star by yes. the way so Teen Wolf that was his thing. I would I would say the guy that play, it's funny to me because the guy's name is Grueler, <laughs> and it's Sasha Jensen, and he um, and he plays I forget the name of his character, but you and I are going to talk about this movie one day. Days and Confused. Oh yes, he's like one of the stoners in Days and Confused. That also stars Ben Affleck, which That's like right. comes out of like a year or so later. There's all these parts that these people do later on. I'm like I know who that is. There's Natasha Gregson Wagner. She's in here. Oh, that's and right. Oh, my God. Cassandra. That's... Yes. And she's in that uh, High Fidelity. She's mm-hmm. in that movie, and her mother is Natalie Wood. And Randall Battenkoff, who plays Jeffrey, he was in that movie with Molly Ringwald where she gets pregnant. Do you remember this movie? Oh my God. It's for crazy. Keeps? Yes, for, for keeps. For keeps. Oh, my God. We should put that one on the list. That we movie's... should put that one on the list. That movie's bananas. It's fucked up that movie. Like what they uh, we just put it on there. We'll we'll get to that. We'll, we'll table that discussion. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So there's there, there's a, there, there's some incredible people in here that are just like, oh, I know that person from that thing, and I know them from that thing, and yeah, it's it's. By the way, did I tell you it was a uh, Sand Dollar Productions that produced this movie? That was Dolly Parton's company. I, it, that's just another reason why Dolly Parton is fucking rad. She does everything so she well. She does everything. Yes. God, I love her. <laughs> I love her so much. What do you think of Paul Rubens in this movie? I wanted, I forgot to look it up. When did he have his thing? <laughs> do you remember he was caught in a movie oh, yes. theater? <laughs> so I looked it up. It was the okay. year before. So this movie and, um, <sighs> damn it. It was this movie and another movie that I can't remember. Batman Returns. Yeah, uh, came out in ninety two, and they were kind of his like return after it being was... arrested for jerking off in an adult movie theater, <laughs> which, by the way, was a really big deal at the time because he he played Pee Wee and he was on Saturday mornings, and you know to be arrested for such a thing, which I mean, who cares? Like, who cares? Right. He's you're he's in the right place. Like, by the way, Fred Willard got arrested for the same thing like a couple years ago. No one cares. <laughs> Well, also, people are like, Fred, there's a thing called Pornhub. Yeah. Like, whatever you're into, you can just be home. It's such an old man thing to do. Such an old man (laughs) thing to do. But at the time, you had to go to dirty movie theaters. Oh, Pee-wee. Oh, Pee-wee. And Pee-wee Herman had a big uh, Saturday morning show. It was a big deal. He had the Pee-wee Herman movies. And then he was caught doing this. And it was like front page news yes. everywhere his reputation was ruined yeah so people it was actually thought he would never work again this. yeah and it was actually a big deal that he yeah. had this movie and it just like they let him just do his thing and eventually people realized like this is not a big deal it's not like you know like michael jackson michael jackson took it over a couple of years later no with his shit. first trial yeah 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 um i i remember after paul rubens got arrested what was it like a month or so later he went on the MTV video awards? Do you remember this? <laughs> Have you heard any good jokes lately? <laughs> it's Which like is the best my... way to handle anything. It's like the best thing ever. And yeah. I was so glad that Pee Wee was back. And Pee Wee's Big Adventure is one of my all time favorite comedies. I think it's hilarious. I laugh super hard every time I watch it. And I've watched it a million times because I have a seven year old. So it's a really I love that movie. We should and put that on our list. We should. And I think I think he's quite funny in this. I like that he, oh, he's good. Uh I like when he's dragging out his death, you know, and he's just like it's just going on and on and on and you know, uh he at one point like he's fighting Pike and Pike like pulls off his arm and he's like, You ruined my new jacket. Kill him a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Kill him a lot is a favorite line. That's that, a good line. That's a solid line. I just yeah. I thought he was really great in it and it is I think it's just a very easy to watch movie like does it it doesn't hold a candle to the tv show I get it like if you go online and you read about the Buffy the Vampire Slayer movie people shit all over it that's fine maybe it's not for them 
I will not shit all over it. I think this movie's really fun. I really like it. Um, but it it is not like the show. The show is really smart. It has a lot to say about like responsibility and in grief mm-hmm. and gr- you know growing up and things like like it's a really 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 good show and it's absolutely like made me cry and made me laugh really hard and it's I super love it I own it it's great the movie is not the show at all the show the movie's not even close to like the show but there are things that I really love about the movie and I do love where she's trying to talk to her friends and she's explaining like how something's happened and that everything you think is so important now feels so stupid and all of her friends are like oh like we're stupid now like whatever you know they're huge assholes about it but the truth is it's something and you'll attest to this this is something people say after they've gone through some shit oh yeah you know when you've gone through some shit all the especially like and really at 21 this line didn't click with me but now I'm an old lady so like it works for me. I was like, yeah, when you've seen something, when you've gone through something, like stuff like, you know, who's dating who in high school, it's just is stupid. It seems stupid. So I get it. And I, I, I did like that scene a lot, actually. It's, it's, and I like the woman who plays her mother is different from the yeah. TV show. It's yes. Candy Clark. Yeah. And she's kind of a yuppie type. <laughs> I do very different where Buffy comes in after killing vampires and she's all dirty and she's got blood on her and the mom's like do you know what time it is and she's (laughs) all 10 see I knew it this watch isn't working (laughs) you think she's going to be chastised for blowing curfew but no her mom's just an absentee mom so I love the fashions the 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 workout (laughs) fashion the 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 tights yes like uh, with the with the, the the shorts over the long tights mm-hmm. and then the crop top bikini top bra top yes I remember that look I remember that very very well that's what we worked out in the movie is ninety two so it's still so eighties right it's still just so eighties like especially at the dance and you see all the fashion and the hair and it's just very very 80s it's very california and very 80s that too it sounds toasty <laughs> like <a> total <laughs> valley girl talk <laughs> what's your sitch you sound like something from another tax bracket <laughs> it's got the joss whedon touches yes. you know if you're familiar with his work it's a little bit there but you could tell they changed it he he apparently just hates this movie and hates when anybody brings it up and really upsets him yeah well, he does things that upset me, too. So, too bad, Josh. Yeah. Yeah. And his ex-wife, apparently. <laughs> apparently. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. Did you re- did you read it before before recording this? or The the story about the, the ex-wife? Yeah. Did you read that yeah, today? On, In your I read research? it today. It was on, yeah. So, it was on Jezebel and his wife. I think it was two years ago. Um, but they were going through their divorce and they've been together for, I don't know, is it 10 or 20 years? I'm sorry. I'm bad with math, but I think they married in 95, but she said that here's this guy who proclaims himself to be a big feminist and pro women and stuff. And basically he was like stooping all these actresses Ugh. on his show, yeah, on the shows that he worked on. And then he did the first, one of the first drafts for Wonder Woman and the Wonder Woman they know now with Patty Jenkins and Gal Gadot. And in his version, Wonder Woman at one point decides to seduce somebody and do a strip tease, and that then sounds... use her truth of the, her lasso after that. But at first, she has to strip tease, and it's just like, oh yeah. Could you imagine how pissed off you would be if you went to see Wonder Woman and that happened? I, I think, but we would be like the angry feminists in the room that don't get it, because we, we're so used to women being objectified and yeah. having to do dumb crap in movies. And that's what, like, that's, that's, that's also part of Buffy's that, appeal. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. the kind of shit that happens in, like, episodes of Charlie's Angels. Like, come on, yeah. now, it's time to grow up. Let's right. stop that. Right. Because Buffy yeah. is, like, the TV show is embraced by 
women all over the world and makes them feel powerful and Buffy is a very powerful character and to and he is a huge part of that show obviously so like yeah. to hear that like he's just a fucking asshole like everybody else is really like disappointing yeah and his, and his whole defense was like well I couldn't seem to help it all these really attractive women all of a sudden are paying attention to me and I've always been a nerd and like <sighs> how that's I know exact. Thank you. Yes. Shut up, Josh. Just Ugh. shut up, Wayne. I know. Really, stop talking. Just apologize and keep your head yeah. down and shut up. Just shut up. <laughs> the movie did pretty well for the time. Yeah, critics. Um, critics didn't like it, but it it did okay. And then, but if honestly, if it had done any better, I mean, maybe we wouldn't have got the show. And I think. I like I like that these two things exist. I like that they're out there. And I like, you know, everyone shits all over, like, reboots and remakes and things like that. But I like the idea of someone taking something that maybe wasn't perfect the first time and trying it again. And Buffy was perfect for a longer form medium, like television. Like, you get to really see her character, like, come into her own and get stronger and get smarter and learn things that... You're just not going to get in like an 80 minute movie. <laughs> yeah, totally. I so, totally get that. So I'm into it. Do I you... think it's fine. I'll never watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. You know, not every, not every movie is for everybody. And we're going to talk about that later when we get to what we're dorking out about. But I wanted to tell you the top 10 movies of 92. Oh, go for it. Okay. So. Number, I'll start at number 10, was Wayne's World. <gasps> Wayne's <love> World. Movie. <laughs> number nine was Bram Stoker's Dracula. Oh, what a terrible movie. We should put that on the list. Yes. <laughs> Please. Number eight is Sister Act. I do like Sister Act. I, I kind of have a soft spot for Sister Act. Yeah, I played it my cute. Yeah. Number seven was A Few Good Men. I love A Few Good Men. That one played at my theater, too. I saw. I used to have that Jack Nicholson speech memorized. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be able to do it all the time. Now, no. Number six was Batman Returns. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of surprised it was only number six. Number three, or number five was Lethal Weapon 3. Oh, God, that was terrible. Ooh. Number four is Basic Instinct. We should talk about that. Yeah, that should go on the list. Number three. Definitely. Home Alone 2. Mm. I don't like the second one. I like the first one so much. I yeah. don't care about the second one. Yeah. I don't even... I know I saw the second one, but it clearly didn't make much of an impression mm -mm. on, on me because I don't remember. Number two is The Bodyguard. No, oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> which we've already talked about on this show. <laughs> and number one was Aladdin. Oh, my God. That makes sense. Disney movie, Disney's animated movies made so much fucking money back in the day. Back <laughs> I mean, they, yeah, still, back in the eight, they still, and 90s. yeah, they still make money. I mean, you know, you'll get like a Frozen and Frozen made like just a ridiculous amount of money. But I worked at movie theaters that always got the Disney movies and those movies would play for like a year, a year. Oh, yeah. Little Mermaid. Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, Lion King, they all played for a year. It's ridiculous. Wow. Damn. Anyway, so that's the top ten movies. So I have the songs. <gasps> I love the, I love this part. Tell me. Okay. These were some of the top songs of that time. Um, right Said Fred, <laughs> I'm Too Sexy. I still love that which, song. <laughs> I still love that song, too. But, boy, they played that everywhere oh all my the God. time. And then um, I, I only got four here. Okay. My second one, another big one that time, Mr. Big, To Be With You. <laughs> God, that song. You couldn't get away from it. Oh, it was played everywhere. Okay. <sighs> Prince and the New Power Generation, Diamonds and Pearls. Oh, we've talked about them on the show before. That's when he was dating the sisters. Yep. Ew. Oh, yep. Ew. God, just sister dating is just weird. That's so gross. And then... The last one, and this came out around this time, Nirvana smells like Teen Spirit. Oh, well, come on. And there's flannel in this movie. Like they were, yeah. they were ready for this. Yes, they were. They were on board. Yes. And that was 
Do you remember, like, this is a whole sidetrack. The first time I heard that song, I was like, holy fucking shit. Like, that song. It's was, incredible. Yeah. It changed no. everything. I don't know if, like, we could stress enough, like. It was all like, she's my cherry pie, like all this no. bullshit music. And then that comes out and you're like, what? I saw Nirvana. Oh my God, you're so lucky. In uh, 91, there was a band called Tad, T-A-D. Mm -hmm. And everybody was into Tad. Like they were the cool band from Seattle to be into. Well, with a name like Tad, come on. Exactly. So me and my fella... <laughs> And he's talking tad, tad, tad the whole way there. I'm like, whatever. And we go there. <laughs> and Nirvana was one of the bands that opened up for them. And Nirvana, it was they were on like 730 at night or something. And like San Jose, it was like a terrible gig. And they were, they blew the fucking roof off. Like everyone yeah. freaked out of them. And we didn't know their songs. We didn't know anything about them. And then like six months later, I, I'm watching MTV and this video comes on. I'm like, oh my God, it's that band. Yeah. And it changed everything. But they were, you could just tell, like everything changed when they hit, when they showed up. I think yeah. it's like the Beatles in 64. Like it was like the world just, just was different. And like, and after that, like every band was like, they wanted to be the next Nirvana. I mean, and every that's, band, and that's yep. the whole grunge thing. But that song, that song yep. was the, the thing. It was. And the video. Yeah, it's just incredible. It just changed everything for everybody yeah. after that, and and like I yeah, like then that like the Mr. Biggs went away quickly. <laughs> yeah, the the warrants and the uh, extreme. Um, yeah, extreme and um, poison. 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 They all went away for like 10, 15 years. Yeah. Like now they're all touring and they do really well. Right on the nostalgia thing. Like they all like poison everybody. They do fine. They tour like every summer and do mm -hmm. great, but they didn't work. I, I I've seen like behind the music and stuff. Like they're like, I didn't work for 10 years yeah. because of Nirvana. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, yeah, that's true. Yeah. But you're right. All those bands tour now and they come and they play like different venues around here. Yeah. And they do really well. They do like two or they're smart. There's like two or three of them. Yeah. Together. So like, I, last year, I took my mom to see Journey and Foreigner and Def Leppard. Oh, and that's, I, I would have gone. Why didn't you invite me? I would. <laughs> <laughs> would you have flown out here for that? Then I would have definitely, I will invite you next time. Next? But that, yeah, that's what they do. It's like Poison. I'm trying to think of like, like the Warren, no, they lost their singer. But like there's bands that like. They, they come back together and they all tour together and they yeah. do really well. Yeah, and like, they only have to work in the summertime. Like you just play the, the fairs, like right. the summer fairs or whatever. And you make a, like, and they're, and, the, and those kind of bands aren't the only one. Like I know like salt and Peppa comes through sometimes and mm -hmm. plays those or like En Vogue will play those yep. or um, Rick Springfield comes through and plays those. And every year I'm like, I'm going to go see Rick Springfield. That would be awesome. And I never do, but I keep I, saying I, I did see Rick Springfield. I saw him in, when I was a kid. I but... saw him in like 93 or four, <laughs> like before I moved here. And he played at a little place in San Francisco. And like, I did was the it one at the Warfield? Lilita... Not the Warfield. Okay. It was a smaller venue, but I actually waited back at, you know, the back door yeah. with everybody else to get his autograph. I've never done that before. It was such a great show that like me and my friends hung out and I have Rick Springfield's autograph and I'll send you a picture of yes, it. Yes, please do. My sister and oh. I have this huge soft spot for Rick Springfield. We used to listen He's to amazing. him. We used to listen to him all the time when we were kids. Um, Working class dog. I totally have uh, stuff for dorking out, but I have this whole other story that I want to tell. Speaking of like waiting backstage, it didn't happen to me. It happened to one of my coworkers. So when I worked at the Examiner, the San Francisco Examiner. We used to be in the offices above the Warfield in San Francisco. And we could like hear the music all the time. And like sometimes they would have the fog machines and like the, <laughs> and then it would be like the moors of Scotland in our office, <laughs> like this weird like fog all over the floor. But um, one night, one of my coworkers was going to like pick up some food or whatever. And he walked around the back to like the side entrance to the war field and there was like a crowd kind of gathered around and he was like oh what's everybody waiting for and they're like billy idols in there and then <laughs> billy idol came by the way this isn't like 
a peak popularity Billy Idol. This is like early 2000s Billy Idol. (laughs) (laughs) And like he said, just then Billy Idol like opened the door and like all this smoke pours out and he was just full Billy Idol, like the hair and the outfit and everything. (gasps) And he's like signing autographs and people are like, yay. And right at that time, like a homeless man was walking by and he's like dragging a chair like with him, like some like folding chair or something. And he's walking by and he walks up to Billy Idol and he gets right in his face and he goes, white wedding. (laughs) (laughs) And Billy Idol's all, yeah, man. And he like takes the man's chair and he signs his chair. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, Billy Idol gets it. I love that story. It's not my story, but I still tell it like it is. <laughs> no, it's a great story, though. Uh, what else are you dorking out about, Margot? Well, one thing I really dorked out about is that for our show, we had two stars of a movie like our tweets. <gasps> and oh, that was so exciting. It was so exciting. So don't tell mom the baby's babysitter's dead. Yes. It was Keith Coogan and then uh, liked them. And like a week later, Joanna Cassidy liked a whole bunch of our tweets. And I about died. I know. I was like floating around on air here in the house. I was like, oh. (laughs) By the way, teenage Sonia would have, I don't even know if I could have comprehended that Keith Coogan would acknowledge my existence back then. I I would have fainted. he and his wife like like liked our tweets. I was just like, oh my god, this is just too cool. Yeah. So um, I'm also freaking out, freaking out. I'm dorking out about uh, Alan Alda's podcast. I talked about it before. Oh yeah. He had he had on a guest Sarah Vowell, who I just oh yeah, love. she's awesome. She's it, the the show is called Clear and Vivid. She was so funny. She's just so amazing. And then I found this on Netflix yesterday. It's a British show. And it's called Kitten Rescues. <gasps> I, I, I have it like I see it on oh my, my list God. or whatever, but like I haven't watched it because I'm afraid it'll make me cry. Will it make me cry? It, it'll make you cry. And I will warn you guys this. All the, almost all the kittens are fine. I mean, they, they, the ones that don't make it, it's really quick and, you know, whatever. Yeah. There's lots and lots of cats that are rescued. Aww. Which is awesome. But there's like cats stuck in trees. There's cats stuck in pipes. And, oh, poor and it's all these people that the RSPCA in, in England, that these people just love animals and just want to take care of them. And it's so cute. And the lady who, Joe Branch is the woman who hosts it. The very last episode takes place at Christmas. So you see all these cats and kittens in Christmas boxes. <laughs> it's, but I will tell you this. Yeah. Every episode features one cat or kitten that needs a major operation oh. and they film it. Like <gasps> you, you got to really like look quick away mm. and uh, it's really kind of gruesome, but, but they, most of them make it and, and they all have like really cute names. I'm in love with one called Smoky Bacon, Smoky. which just, which was this cute <laughs> little Brown thing with big green eyes. I mean, you just want to reach to the screen and, and kidnap them. I don't know. Aww. And the episodes are like, 30 to 40 minutes and there's only like seven or eight of them but you'll just like tear right through them but it's such it's such a cute show i'm so glad i watched it have you rescues have you watched the there's the other one about like cat walkers or something no with with like the people that show it's like dog shows like cat shows (gasps) oh yeah 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 i haven't seen that one i haven't either i just i put it on my list as something i might want to watch but I'll I'll look for it. Yeah. Let me know if you watch it. So after 11 years and 20 movies, they finally put out a female lead Marvel movie. So I went, I went and saw Captain Marvel this weekend and I liked it. Okay. (laughs) All right. Um, It's here's the thing. It's very entertaining, but it's not very, it, It didn't feel, it didn't feel like Wonder Woman for me. And it's interesting that we're talking about this while we're talking about Buffy and we were kind of talking about Josh Whedon and we're talking about, we mentioned Wonder Woman earlier and Wonder Woman had these like, like scenes in it where we really get to see her like be a hero, like, Mm -hmm. like, especially that scene in No Man's Land where she's like, 
I have to help these people. It's not part of their mission or whatever, but she's still like, I'm helping these people because I'm a hero. And she climbs that ladder and they're all shooting at her and she takes on the firepower. And every woman I know, like, tears up when you, like, talk about that scene. And it's just bananas, like, that scene. And I was waiting for, like, that moment and Captain Marvel, and it just never comes. And I was... Really? So I was disappointed. And, I mean, maybe there's other people that are getting that moment, but it didn't come for me. And I was so bummed. And, you know, I do... I think Brie Larson's really great in it. I think um, there's good stuff in it. Like I said, it's very entertaining. It's not like ground. It doesn't feel very groundbreaking, I guess. Like mm-hmm. after something like Black Panther that was so awesome at building its world and with all the characters and the motivations of everybody, including the villains and things like that. This one just seemed like more paint by the numbers Marvel movie. Mm-hmm. Than, than that so in that way I was like uh, you know I, I I wanted more and I I think the problem was I'm not I'm really burned out on like memento style storytelling mm-hmm. where like they're jumping into the middle of stories and then the mystery is like us trying to figure out the past and I think that this movie does that and I think we would have liked or I would have liked it more if we had just seen like a hero's journey from beginning to end like a good story from beginning to end instead of we join her in the middle and right. try to like figure out what happened I'm like I don't want that part I just want to she doesn't know who she is for like most of the movie and because of that we don't know who she is so then I can't connect with her Right. That sounds weird. Yeah. Like, like I said, I didn't dislike it. I, because there's some really great stuff in there. And I, like I said, Brie Larson is really, really fun. And her and Sam Jackson, Samuel Jackson have like, I almost said Sam Jackson, like he's my friend, you know, (laughs) Sam Jackson. Yeah. He's always over here hanging out, asking me what's in my wallet and stuff like that. It's awesome. (laughs) So Brie Larson and Samuel Jackson have like really fun, like chemistry and like, she's really great but like I just needed more I wanted that moment and I just didn't get it so I was gonna I was gonna try to see it this weekend because I knew you were gonna go see it but it was sold out all of the 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 showing yeah I think like there's like either you can see it at 10 a.m or 10 p.m yeah and there was just no way I could do either so I was gonna try to sneak out today but I had a I had something come up, but I'm going to try to see it this week anyway, because I still want to see it. I still think it's worth seeing. And like I said, I think there's good stuff in there. And I did have a good time while I was watching it. It was just Mm -hmm. when it was over and I'm like heading home and I was like, "Mm, it just didn't give me that moment that I was looking for. So, and and that's mainly it. Like, I feel like it was just, if I could get a good story from beginning to end. Mm-hmm. It almost feels lazy to me at this point to do the whole like starting in the middle and then right. make us like d- the mystery is like, how did she get here? I'm like, just tell the story from beginning to end like they did in the cap in the first Captain America. That's fine. Yeah, Th- I would like that. But that's OK. A-, a lot of people really like this. I'm glad it's making a ton of money. I want right. more movies with female leads. I'm into it. Um I don't know who these like assholes are that are like going on Rotten Tomatoes and writing shitty reviews just because it happens to star a woman. That's some serious bullshit. Well, it's it's incels with like a lot of you know psychological issues, <laughs> and they need therapy. Yeah, I'm sorry the girls life. don't like you. Yeah, exactly. This is why because you're terrible. <laughs> so, so does the movie take place in the '90s? Yes, it does. And That's it has kind of cool. Yeah, and it's got a very '90s soundtrack which you know there's not a song in there you won't recognize and speaking of flannel there's some flannel you know stuff like that (laughs) it's like I said it is very entertaining and I'm glad that it's out there and I think Brie Larson is I just like Brie Larson I I've always liked Brie Larson she's great and I think she's really great in this and I look forward to seeing her in the Avengers Endgame um she's because Captain 
Captain Marvel's pretty cool. Pretty cool. I know nothing about the character too. So. I knew nothing about her either, but I saw, I went to the Alamo draft house and they have those like, you know, the half hour before the movie, they start showing all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And so I got like, a, that's kind of my history. That was my research. <laughs> Alamo <laughs> did all my research for me. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay, now I know kind of who she is and Shazam, <laughs> who I also know nothing about. I, I remember Shazam was a show in the seventies. I think it was, yeah. And it was a show when I was a kid. It was like in reruns. Yeah. And yeah, it was a kid. Yeah, and there, and I remember they mentioned Captain Marvel, but you never saw Captain Marvel. But this kid would just every once, you know, he had like long feathery hair, mm-hmm. like Sean Cassidy kind of hair, David Cassidy look. And all of a sudden he was really cute, and he would just yell Shazam, and then he would be in an outfit, <laughs> and then he'd run really fast. And, and I was little. I'm like, okay. Uh, it's great i love it this is a show okay it's a thing to watch okay yeah, that's all you care about when you're that age yeah it's so fine. so i give captain marvel a, a thumbs up but keep in mind it's maybe not going to give you that big wonder woman moment that's all all right i can live with that yeah where can people find you on the internet margo the best place to look for me is on on social media is at twitter and instagram and it's at brooklyn fit chick and my blog is brooklynfitchick.com. And my other shows are Not Fade Away, The Fit Bottom Girls Podcast, The Best Neighbors Podcast, and Book versus Booby. And you can find me on Twitter at The Sonia Show and on my blog at thesoniashow.com. And you can find Dorking Out on Twitter and Facebook at Dorking Out Show and on at our website at just dorkingout.com. And this was super fun as always. Thanks. As always, my friend. Yeah, thank you, chosen one. <laughs> I can't remember every goddamn dialogue from this movie. I just said, kill him a lot. That's what I remember. Kill him a lot. <laughs> you ruined my jacket. Kill him a lot. <laughs>